it's 802. We'll call the August 9th Transit Committee meeting to order. We'll roll call. We have everyone present except for John Mendes. Uh, John's on the phone. Oh, John's on the phone? Okay, good. Yep. Everybody good morning. Here. I didn't see that one. Uh, approval minutes for the July 12th. Second. Do a motion to amend. I'd like to am uh, do an amendment at the bottom that says no full recording would be available at the YouTube. That way citizens could have a full context. It's, it's out there. Sure. So that's my motion to amend. Is there a second for that? Motion? No second. Then uh, motion to amend to add what the YouTube? The YouTube link. Uh, at the bottom, just note for citizens that the full recording is available at the YouTube link. And I'm not going to say it all the letters. <laughs> any, <laughs> any other discussion? Any other discussion? All in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The amendment passes. Okay, back to the original motion. Approve the minutes with the addition and discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Good. Uh, public comment? Nothing, you know. Uh, staff reports, Austin. All right. <clears throat> Transit Commission meeting, 8 9 2023. Today, it's actually quite a few things to talk about uh, ridership, community route, fare change, grant timeline, electric bus update, solar update, financials, and on the route, and any questions. So looking back to this last month, doorstop and Red Cedar ridership decreased uh, from 519 down to 408 in July, down a little over 20%. And then the community route increased from 791 to 843 in July, up 6.5%, which was good to see. Uh, looking back at previous years on community, uh, did very well again. Um, compared to previous years, looking at doorstop and red cedar ridership, you pair them together up the top, um, sitting at 408, looking, uh, down a little back to previous years, but a lot of those riders again are riding that community bus, um, Okay, this is the main topic for the day. Uh, and this is also in the considerations for actions to be taken by the commission. But uh, this route has been free since June 1st of 21. And uh, that's back when we were getting zero to three riders a day. Um, shaved a couple stops off, improved the route. Got the ridership up to, you know, 40 to 100 riders a day. Um, and if at that time it was bringing in such little money, it costed more and just the time to count the change than the route was even bringing in. Um, but also with us trying to look forward and improve our local share um, uh, for state funding and, and just rising costs of everything else. I um, think it's a good time to bring this back. Previously, our fare was $1.50 uh, for non-elderly, non-disabled, and then 75 cents for elderly disabled riders. Um, potential fare ideas, I mean, this is up for any discussion. These are just a few of the ideas that I came up with is going back to the same that we had before. Um, we're doing a dollar across the board um, and uh, doing a $15, 20 ride punch card, which 
gives a discount down to 75 cents a ride. And that'd be a little easier to track than if we did a monthly pass uh, kind of thing. And that wouldn't, if it was a punch card, it wouldn't get, you know, copied out in the field and people trying to uh, do that because we'd be the ones taking the punches out of the card rather than somebody trying to copy a monthly pass out there. Um, and this wouldn't expire. You know, you use your rides up until they're done rather than yeah. June is June and July is July. So um, I like that idea a little bit better uh, for the punch card style. But um, to the right, uh, can, uh, we can, yeah. Can I ask a question? You talked about the two different... Uh, rates that you had with um, elderly and disabled versus whatever the other category was. Yep. My just a dollar That's across the board. Yep. Yeah. Um, what's the ride share comparison? Is there or don't you know? Like how many of the total riders are el elderly or disabled versus not? And if you don't know, you don't know. It's we okay. have that data to an extent. A lot, of, you know, you're not going to ask the person, right? Right. But you right. can tell and when they get on the bus. Um, the driver should be putting in through the right. classification on there, like sixty-five or well, whatever. Sixty-five was the age. Okay. Uh, but um, nobody asks. No, you know, nobody asks if they're a student, if they're just a young individual right, getting right. on the bus up until. I guess the reason I was asking is mm -hmm. if there was a way to, um, you know, if you. In my mind, if you can make it free to the to that category mm -hmm. and charge the other riders a little bit more to offset mm -hmm. that, you mm -hmm. know, um, just as a I, that's just my mind thinking, obviously, mm -hmm. but. That's why I was wondering if there was a big difference, you know, or, or if that's the main ridership or not. But it, I don't think it is. <clears throat> okay. I think a lot of those riders, I mean, some are taking that bus that used to take the doorstop bus, but a lot of community members are taking that bus. And you can see in the, in June and July, when a lot of the students are out, and the numbers are yeah. still 800 riders. Yes, I was just getting into the yeah into the more fixed income group, probably mm -hmm. you know, and just trying to look out for them a little bit. What we could do exactly what we used to do up until June of 21, where it it does the tiered system, yeah. so it cuts the cost in half. And if the other riders would like to cut their cost in half. They can buy that punch card and it right. gives them the identical rate. Well, it doesn't rate. really cut the punch card, doesn't really cut the elderly or disabled in half. It goes to their fare, basically, is what. Mm -hmm. So the benefit is to the other group as far as cutting it in half. So, and, and I'm not saying 75 cents is too much money mm -hmm. for a ride. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just thinking out loud where my mind is and just, so, you know, trying to help sort through this to see if there's any other options. So. How much time does this add to each stop? And it changes I, the nature of the... Yeah, I thought about that too a little bit because these are pretty quick, you know, but it shouldn't add more than 30 seconds. And then they're able to buy them right there when they get on the bus? Yeah, they should exchange the cash or punch the punch card. Um, and go. Are we going to have an app system with like uh, QR? Because we don't a lot have, of folks that don't have cash. Yeah, anymore. we we do not have a. IT is working with us on getting a non-cash system, but with the centralized accounting that the county has, um, and the accounting software that they have for taking payments for taxes and stuff like that. They, there's currently not an app. So it's it's kind of a cash only thing. Is there is there a capability to do the like the clipper card with that system? Maybe you're right. And like, I brought up Square and, and stuff to them as well. Well not just Square. I'm trying to, I, I I had a when I wrote on BART, 
what it means. That's yep. San Francisco or the train, but um, there was a, you just buy a clipper card and then it's in your Google Pay. And it just, it was, you just had an amount that you could just pay into it and you could put money on it at any time. Um, yeah, so if I ever get back to San Francisco, my clipper balance is $6 and 60 cents. Okay. And you're able to, uh, and it's for an adult. So you're able to modify that as well. Um, I don't know, obviously how much that system cost, but it, it was an easy way for people yeah. to, to get in and out. You could just, and then I just threw the stall. I mean, it was a different situation, but. No, that's a big uh, suggestion from the communities is going to something like that. Uh, when it's wireless too, this that's what was brought up to yeah. transit from IT about the security too, when it's wireless and not hardwired in. Um, but that'd be very nice to get you know get rid of a cash system Although the entirely cost, the cost of that point, might but, override yeah. the charging folks so um the free parking is an in mm -hmm. summer because <laughs> it costs too much these are just these are just ideas too with the cost for a punch card stuff like that so if we wanted to make it ten dollars for 20 rides or something it'd still be a discount for for everybody but if the floor is open to ideas yeah so when you're talking about you know handicaps and are all buses so can you take a uh, wheelchairs or not yes does yes. the driver have to get out of the seat the help or anything or yes so that's not many one. community yeah. not many yeah. wheelchair riders ride okay. the community bus I, I but it's there if they curious. need it okay um they normally ride by door stop bus um because where a lot of these stops are they're not necessarily at the front door let's just say the hospital and the other question i had you talking like you earlier about you know, how some routes are up and some are down is there any correlation if one is down the other one is up yes i 100 percent believe that okay. because that this one's free. Yeah. The other one's three dollars, and a lot of times they're taking you to the same place. Okay. So, a lot of times, this one rider rides the free bus there when he has no groceries. Okay. And he can walk over to the bus stop, and then when he comes home, he rides it straight home with four bags of groceries. I'm just kind of curious. There was a correlation if one mm -hmm. is up, it takes away from the other. When it's one. ninety degrees out to the. Mm -hmm. The ridership goes down a little bit for that that more elderly disabled bus. So you said you didn't want the or you didn't like the monthly pass yeah. as well. I don't like the monthly pass. So I just put it down there. That's what we used to do, and it was like forty five dollars. It didn't okay. even make sense, but I put it on there as a discount. Yeah, a I lot did. lower because mm -hmm. if somebody rode it to work two times a day, five days a week, four weeks a month, it makes sense, but I like the punch card idea a lot, yeah. a lot better. How about a punch card for over 65 and then general? I, I don't know. Like, would that be easier to do? I mean, punch card. Yeah, maybe get it down to, you know, $10 for 50 cents. Yeah, $10 for 20 if you're over right. 65. And if your the other card is, yeah. yep. I'm just suggesting after you brought that up. But the only problem, Randy, is a lot of women don't want to. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you don't want the discount. All right, let's <laughs> just. I'm start. not gonna say it. <laughs> I, I, I turned fifty on Monday. There you go. I'm just saying that would be a solution. We're almost the same age. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just and, enough. Yeah, and with this, we're yeah. we're not asking if somebody's handicap or elderly right. and it's right. just something where you I take get the, I get that dynamic but I just you know, nope that that's fine I mean, that's, if we're running if we're gonna run the tiered pricing right running a tiered punch card makes perfect sense, make sense too, too. Uh, is, uh, I don't know what Austin when we get to I as I mean you looked at it and so are you trying to get to a certain level of revenue for local shares yes i mean in all these different ideas are you 
I don't think it's our job to do your job. I think ours is to give oversight and feedback, but I mean, ultimately you have to do the math and figure out where you think. So, I mean, are you moving towards a certain direction in, in the list of ideas? I think both of the top numbers are good. $1 across the board or the tiered system with a lot of our riders being ambulatory, non-elderly, um, that would bring in 50% more revenue than the line above. And we would give a discount to right. the other riders. It would bring us exactly to where we were before. And the goal was, let's just say 500 riders a month were paying a dollar a piece mm -hmm. times 12 months out of the year. That's uh, the 6,000 of local share that let's just say we were short last year yeah, from season. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So you put another 50 cents on that or even just 25 if you take off the 25 from some of those elderly and disabled i think it's exactly where we need to be okay and i guess the other question i have is do you, do you want to keep it wrong numbers do you want to mess with change and that's you know I, there's some practicality and there's some labor involved that too it, yeah. no i I agree. That's why I said the dollar across the board and not fiddling with change. Yeah. But, but I like the tiered system and the discount and getting fifty cents more. Yeah, maybe you keep it at a dollar, but you punch punch cards. If you buy a punch card, that's where you get your little yeah. deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This makes it more efficient. It it I I mean ridership some of it will go away because of but i think that's going to be the biggest haul is going from nothing to one dollar or whatever amount it is and then if there has to be an increase in the future that'll be less of a lift mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. going from nothing yep yeah you could always revisit it in yeah. years. so it's a, a good study yeah. so is would the consensus be a dollar across the board an elderly and disabled punch card at ten dollars for twenty rides. It's, that's fifty cents a ride, and then that's what I would suggest. Then yeah. a fifteen dollar non-elderly punch card at seventy five cents a ride. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And don't even do the monthly pass option. No. No. Yeah. Okay. You need a motion on that. That's coming up. Oh, well, it is on seven. Okay. Yep. So continue on to the. Yeah. Next slide. Yeah. Okay. Go through the. I'll I'll burn through the rest of these pretty quick. So the only grant that uh, needed to be submitted uh, shortly here was the city of Menominee. I submitted that on eight three, and that had a ten percent increase, like we previously talked about, and I submitted a paper copy and an electronic copy on that. Electric bus update, uh, this email came in um, uh, Monday and only verbiage that changed was on the left side, Altoona test schedule. Final stage of the technical solution of Buy America supplier. It's like they kind of just changed up the wording from last month on that, but scheduled to receive the test battery on site mid or late August. So that's coming up here in a few weeks. And uh, began the conversation with Altoona Pennsylvania for scheduling the test and still on the timeline for um, the end of the year. Now, solar update, uh, same slide as uh, put together for last month, but just letting you know I got that submitted. Uh, just a pretty much a page, page and a half summary of kind of the location and um, real high view of where, when, what it needs to power, and, and then they'll help with deciding what all it's needed for that. Um, financials, uh, put four months looking back at this, and every month it's gotten better uh, with the savings we've gained in the summer. Through June, uh, we added 15,000 to the fuel forecast, and it's still sitting 3,000 is good at that. And then no other changes in July other than put a little bit more money in the savings. On the route, last month we talked about that. We bought that 
Cricut vinyl cutter. And with approval from Walmart, we uh, finally got the different uh, bus stop signs up uh, to kind of differentiate where each door stop up here, uh, community bus up there. So, okay. nice. yeah. Stout annual survey, uh, we had our meeting last uh, afternoon about this and just two slides out of the um, presentation that we went through yesterday and just how would you improve the route? How would you change it? Uh, running later on weekdays for the community route, running on weekends or later on weekends. Um, so, and running more frequently. So we'll talk about this coming up in the next slide here, but any locations you'd think should be added to the bus route, uh, Johnson Field House, it is on the route, but it's across the road. So just getting the verbiage out, continuing to promote that stops right at HKMC. Prevea, uh, which just paired with Stout last semester, or last year, um, that is now on the paper schedules as well as on that online tracker as a stop of its own. Um, and since we're on that subject, I would really like to figure out what we need to do to move that CVTC bus stop that doesn't get used and is on the wrong road to across the street, halfway in between Prevea and Dunn County Human Services on the right side of the road there on the north side with just a concrete pad and moving that bus stop, then one block away is CBTC across the road where um, um, there's a crosswalk, um, stoplights, everything. Um, so I think our utilization of that bus stop would go way up with that. And it would help students and community members know that there is a bus stop there. So. Uh, there's a brand new sidewalk all the way to human services from RCU there on that new service road across the street. So, uh, so my only problem with that is, you know, safety. Anytime you got to cross, that's a busy road out here. You look a lot of traffic and they go pretty fast and, you know, could you make it both stops? Just come right around there and, you know, and go for Well, that CBT bus stop is on, on the north-south road. Oh. by Phillips, not the service road. Oh. And then when it's on that other road, it's another two minutes to get around that loop. Okay. And with that service road, you come out here by Wisconsin. That's a non-controlled intersection, which I really don't like. Then if we don't even go onto that service road, we stay on 12, make a left turn, then you're only crossing one lane of traffic. You come to human services, and mm -hmm. that bus stops right right there. Just an idea. Um, is it nobody uses that bus stop? I'm just gonna say the utilization of the bus stop where it's at is very if it was on the service road, it'd be better between job center and CBTC, but mm -hmm. um we already have it, it doesn't get used in you know a few thousand into a concrete pad on the other side in a few hours, bolting it up think would go a long ways, but we can talk about that uh, another month. Um, and I think <clears throat> you're, you're talking talking this side of which there's way more community members <clears throat> that live on this side of it versus that side of it. Oh, well, even dropping. <clears throat> right. Um, but I mean, there's as far as I can, so I live out back behind there, okay, mm -hmm. behind the hospital, okay, but towards the lake. So for me to walk to the bus stop and never have to cross that, like Gary's talking about, mm -hmm. not have to cross the main drag anywhere, whether it's a controlled intersection or not, mm -hmm. okay, um, would be more convenient and easier and safer mm -hmm. to just stay on this side of mm -hmm. 29. So. I agree. Um, obviously, the mail bus stop is just down the road. Yeah, that the potential location for this other one, but um, I think the understanding of that people can stop there will go way up at Human Services and Prevea if there's a bus stop there. 
Think about um, what's happened. So, I mean, from day one, that bus stop was to put in the wrong spot and is what it is. But what has happened since there is them coming here to services, yes. located, a radio up there. Yeah. So yeah. the draw on that side has gone way up. Yeah. Our, so I think that answers that side of the road. I don't know what your customer draw uh, for CBTC and job center may be. You know, if it does, if that continues to be something, maybe that's maybe that's an addition. But it's it's not high. Not high. Yeah. Um, and anytime we drop them off, we drop them off in front of the. You don't even use them. Yeah. If we pick somebody up, if they're there, but the driver has to be looking on that side upcoming. I guess. I guess that was going to be my next question: Is can we? Can you create a drop just right at? that location cbtc job and you use the parking lot get out and then come over to this side and yeah continue the route. it's just with how tight the route is it gets even tighter uh time, 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 time wise. wise yeah yeah there's a little bit of fluff but not not much yeah, and you're dealing with the stop right there and i turn around and yeah, yeah. um if it was just on the other side. But there is stoplight now on crosswalk there. Yep. So if the bus stop was on the other side, a crosswalk, people can walk over. Um, so well, I would say look into it, okay. figure out where you want to put it, get us, get us a map like that we could see and then get all the details of where you put it and what it might cost or whatever. Um, and then next month we could bring that back. Okay. Okay, now this is pretty exciting. You know, we talked about this last spring. Um, I've been updating ideas on this for the past year, year and a half, and what might work, what might not. And uh, we ran the route and what this, I mean, the biggest feedback on the stout route from students is it doesn't, you know, the community route doesn't go late enough or um, they they can't get to Walmart after class because they're in class till five. And then, you know, community route at that point was done at four. So uh, with what we had for riders on the Stout PM route, um, instead of doing four loops an hour at night, getting you know, three to 10 people on the bus. We dropped it down to three loops in an hour and just added the last five stops of the community route, identical times to on the hour during the day and put them in at night. So it's two loops for Stout, brings them back to Red Cedar if they want to get off, um, heads to Walmart Marketplace and then does the last Red Cedar Clock Tower UW Library, um, looking identical to if they use the community in the afternoon. Um, still maintaining three loops. Uh, we might, we'll probably run a bigger bus, especially if it's a little colder out and, uh, or inclement weather and make sure that, you know, if we're going down to three loops um, compared to four, making sure that capacity stays up. Uh, we were able to get away with the smaller gas buses last year, uh, but that was with four loops, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, they took this to SSA board and um, wanted to move forward with it. So this is a, a net zero cost to do it. It adds a lot of benefit and it doesn't reduce the capacity much at all or wait time. So that's what they do. Yeah, we're gonna roll with it. And then team building, uh, we're gonna do a back to school bonfire before the semester begins like last year. Another thing I have, have we ever looked into the Boysville demand road system? Or where are we at on that? 
So I had a meeting with Human Services uh, about two weeks ago, and um, we talked about different ideas with the lack of volunteer rider program for drivers and stuff like that, um, and the extra money that we had from the savings of last year. because obviously their buses don't go out there and these riders need to go to Eau Claire and stuff like that. Um, this is not feasible. I, no. I would I'd love to do it. it. Yeah, I would just ask about it so I can no. bring it up so I can I, see where we're, if we're going to need it. Information. Yeah. I didn't say that. I know you didn't. <laughs> you know, if if the doorstop rides stay the way they are with the lower volume that they're at, it would definitely be doable. And I don't I don't know what what is the tipping point in, in just going for it. Mm -hmm. I looked into the amount of rides that we were getting when we had our, when Kent was here, and we we're doing that route to Eau Claire every day. Eau Claire and stopping in Elk Mound mm -hmm. twice in the morning and once in the afternoon. So, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, sure, can I add to it? So, uh, which may help with the Eau Claire situation is that we're, I mean, we're working right now on train. And it could be within the next five years. Mm -hmm. um, so Dunn County Transit would probably be wanted to be hooked into our train depot in Menominee, and then that would accommodate sure. the Eau Claire and, yeah. well, and Twin Cities for yeah. that matter. But just put it on your all radar is that that might be a change of schedules that might be needed or an additional thing that might be needed in the future. Not right now. Well, just keep it on your mind, I guess, is all I'm asking. So it's yeah. it'd be very easy to implement, but it's just doing it. Mm -hmm. And if we if we want to move forward doing it, okay. And so Maybe we just figure out a decision next month and maybe doing a trial run. I was just going to ask, like, if the committee has a, a commission has a vision for what that would look like, would it be a, yeah. a one run to Boyceville stop in one place? Would it be picking yeah. up people? What that might look like? With us talking about that and a lot of these being probably wheelchair bound or elderly disabled individuals would be picking them up at their house. Mm -hmm. doors out. Yeah. And we hit three cities on the same, you know, Wheeler, Boysville, Nap. And we bring them into town for the morning. Then, you know, we get busy from 2.30 mm -hmm. to 5 on dialysis days. So it'd have to be Tuesday, Thursdays, and these little things really make or break it on certain days of the week. Um, definitely, you know, we've we've really ventured out compared to previous years on helping more people out of town that we can. And the only way that stays um, by the WISDA standards as long as it doesn't impede with in-town rider. Yeah. Okay. So, try to say yes more than no, as long as it doesn't screw up three rides in town for right. one ride out of town. Right, right. So, okay. So, but about we'll keep <clears throat> keep pressing forward and trying to figure something out on now. Sounds good. Any other questions on the staff report? If not, thanks, Austin. Number seven, consideration actually taking in inspection approval or fair adjustments on community route. I don't know, as we discussed, I mean, dollars plus 75 with the punch cards. 
we have any motion to that. So is it dollar not dollar anybody um at say five punch card non-inventory 50 inventory yeah. punch card? 15, 10 and 15. Yeah. Ten dollars. That's for oh, oh so it'd be for right. So take 15, 15 dollars. Okay, yeah. Yeah, punch card. Okay. And then just the dollar across yeah. the board for okay. right. Just wanted to make sure I got the I'll make that motion. Motion made. Second. Second. Motion made. Second. Any discussion on that? Or any other discussion on that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. That we can start uh, a new fair adjustment. Is there a time frame on that? I think? Oh. Uh, September 1st. Okay. So I thought Mark said. Yep. That I meant, meant to say 9 1 2023. Uh, consideration acts of county board. None. Next meeting is September 13th, 8 o'clock, same place. Any other questions, thoughts? If not, we are urgent. Ready? Uh, it's 8.41, we'll call the August 9th Highway Committee meeting to order. Roll call, we have everyone's present. Approval amends for the July 12th. I'll make that motion. Second. second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on the minutes of that July 12th? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Uh, no public, any public comments? Uh, none, nothing for me. Staff reports. Dustin. I apologize, I didn't make the sli slideshow this month, so we'll have to look on the piece of paper and follow along. Okay. Um, so just to give you an update on what our field staff are, are currently doing. Uh, so we, we did wrap up our uh, chip ceiling projects. Uh, we did have quite a few uh, county, state, and town roads that we did. Uh, so that uh, was completed, swept, and all the pavement markings have been completed. So uh, everything's done on that. So did Farner do the uh, painting? Yes. Well, they do a good job. I don't see any wiggling in there at all, at least on Highway M. <laughs> they, they do a good, they well, do a good like job them. on that. I like, I like it. <laughs> but yeah, um, we did uh, replace a uh, an old sandstone box culvert on County Road G, just west of Highway 25, um, south of uh, Wheeler. Um, it was a very narrow structure, um, and the guardrail continually always kept falling over every year. So we decided to replace that and uh, put in two 48-inch uh, uh, plastic culverts. Um, so that went well. We just got to do the, uh, the asphalt uh, pavement on top of for the repair. Uh, we did uh, do a concrete buckle repair on I-94. Uh, that was uh, completed at night. Um, the DOT is actually uh, due to the traffic volumes on I-94 requiring us to do some of that work at night, mm -hmm. um, just so uh, we don't back traffic up during the day. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that was kind of a struggle, uh, obviously getting employees to come in at night and making a change. So um, we do have a pretty good lighting system uh, that pretty much looks like a Walmart parking lot when we're out there working. So it is. Doesn't the buckle slow down traffic during the day too? No. No, <laughs> no we, we, we don't. Uh, so it was a, a buckle that happened like a month ago. Oh, yeah. so we. We repaired oh, it, but okay, now we okay, put okay. a permanent okay. on okay. concrete. That's what you're saying. I was like, yeah. It's not saying. a Dukes of Hazard. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, <laughs> so, so he used it during the day, but they can't use it at night. No. Um, we, uh, we continually are doing spray patching work. I don't know if you've seen our crews up on Highway 64 um, by County Road O to the St. Croix County line. Doing it is a deteriorated, a very bad deteriorated road. Um, and we are spending day after day up there trying to put a very, very temporary band-aid on it. 
I uh, had this DOT come and look at it. They had actually powers above uh, come in to look at it and see. Uh, currently, I think it's scheduled for 2029 or oh, um, that's mad. That, I don't that, think that, that would have uh, another year. It looks like you're putting an overlay on it now. I mean, except it's yeah. very expensive for you. I mean, I, I, I would say an overlay would actually be beneficial well, with asphalt, matter. but we're we're just literally just putting our spray patch yeah. material on it, just like which is more expensive, isn't it? I mean, that, no, it's it's cheaper, cheaper but okay. it doesn't go very far. No, so we're only going like maybe a quarter mile every day. It seems like that's what I say. You're not. I thought it might be expensive. It, it on average, it's about I'd say four or five thousand dollars a day yeah. to do that. So okay, with two machines. Okay, so it does look better where you've done it. I will have to say. But yeah, we we do get a lot of complaints with it, and like I said, it's not our road. We can only do what the DOT tells us. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are doing some ditching, uh, shouldering, and we obviously are continuing our our road projects. Uh, that's kind of it for our field crews currently. Um, I can let Dan talk about our shop crew. See, you mentioned what's what's happening in the shop. Mm -hmm. um, I put some numbers together. I just thought maybe guys would like to look at it and see the normal on our on our blade usage over the different years. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, Everybody got one? Might be one. Yeah. You get one eyes open? Got a picture. Dustin? I, I didn't, but I've, I've seen it before. Yeah. No, I'm sure you have. Um, <laughs> but it's just kind of interesting. I guess if you look at the, the top here, uh, winter of 2013 and 2014 was probably one of the worst ones that we've had in a long time. Um, and of course, last year ranked right up there with it. Um, but if you look at our blade usage, you know, every year, and these numbers here are what it takes to replace what we use, you know, so the exact, this probably isn't an exact number, but it's within a, a few blades. Mm -hmm. um, and what I, what, what I kind of want to show you was the cost of the blades. Um, in 2013 and 2014, we just used carbide blades and then with a, with a regular uh, cover blade on them. Um, and you can see the amount of blades we went through and the cost of them. Uh, to replace them was 168. Um, that was the first year that we kind of started with the rubber blades. We bought a couple sets of them and we're trying them out. Um, and we, in the next couple of years, we tried out a few different manufacturers. So we're just kind of getting our feet wet in them. Um, you know, I didn't have as bad of winters either, you know, but, but the main thing I want to show you was the, you know, the way that it's, um, the cost of it, you know, the way it's coming out here. Uh, every year that we that we purchase more of the rubber blades, you know, we've we've saved a lot of money because we haven't bought the blades, the carbide and the cover blades, and also the amount of of time that it takes to change the blades. You know, you, it takes the same time to change rubber blades as it does to change the carbide blade. So you're you're cutting your your costs almost in half. And and last year we only spent seventy eight thousand, which was in my mind, and that's state and and county, you know, mm -hmm. not just the county. But the thing of it is too is is we are gaining money on reimbursement from the state too for you know what they're paying us for our plow being on the ground. If we're not using you know as many blades, we're going to be able to keep more of that money. Um, so anyway, I just thought it was kind of interesting you guys, you know, kind of look at it. Um, the guys love the blades. I think the rubber blades are really a uh, uh, beneficial to. Uh, to the snow and it's a lot cheaper to remove snow with a blade than it is with material is it, especially now with the salt going up 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 and up every year i would imagine it's easier on the surface too like you're not tearing up the surface as much snow i wouldn't say it's any different on that and, oh. um oh. yeah that's interesting mm -hmm. you think a sharp edge catching that well, yeah. And it seems like these rubber blades actually cut more. They clean better. Oh, mm -hmm. so yeah. is that right? I'm not yeah. saying we're damaging our roads by any means, but mm -hmm. um, it's yeah. You it, can yeah, you can see it where when the blade goes through. There's carbide that are a foot long, and then there's about a two inch space, and then a foot long. So really, the rubber just encases a carbide blade is really all it's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like the rubber hits the road part right. of it. 
um, you know, and it keeps the vibration down immensely. You, know, you can't even hardly hear the the plow, you know, when it's on the ground versus you know the old carbide yeah. and the vibration. And we we figure it's a lot easier on the trucks and stuff too. Yeah. But when they plow with it, you can see every two inch strip, like a little bit of of snow that's that's just left, you know. So that's how how much they're cleaning is it, you know, that it really it really clean. They really clean well, really cut. Well. Oh. Um, so. Oh. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, that's working working well. Um, we did get the two pickup trucks, the Fords, uh, from North Town Ford. Uh, one of them is done as far as putting all the equipment in. Um, the other one, we still have to do it yet. Um, Dustin, you got some uh, green lights for them, the green and amber. They really, in the shop, they really show, you know show up nice. I think it'd be beneficial for safety and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think Isaac's gonna gonna take this one, which would be helpful because we had the other pickup truck go down. So we're you know we're short about three pickups right now. So these two will really really be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, we've been working on plow trucks and equipment uh, right now, just trying to get everything ready. Um, you know, going through them with the hydraulic hoses and cracks and welding and everything on just to make sure that they're ready to go. Uh, one sad thing is that now we've had, because of the delay in getting our new trucks, we've had to bring in the trucks that we were going to trade off or sell and, and go through those too, because who knows if we're ever going to get or when we're going to get them, if we'll ever get them for this year or not. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's an added expense that we have to uh, incur. Um, we're calibrating the sanders on our state trucks, um, and that's part of our, our winter readiness program. I don't know if you guys are aware of that or not, uh, where the state pays us to have our trucks ready, and they have us calibrate our trucks so that they put the correct amount of salt down per lane mile. Um, and then and then also there's a few other things that we need to do, you know, with the reflectivity and the lights, and, you know, there's a lot of safety factor that goes in there, too. Um, but we can get one for one to qualify for every route, which would be nine, I believe. Um, I tried to talk them into the tenth one because we usually use one out in the interstate in the center all the time, but they they won't do it. But it's nice we get that done. It's a it's around three thousand dollars we get per truck, you know, for that. So you know, it's a nice nice check to come back. Um, so we're working on that. We got about three or four of them done already. Um, the the trucks work fantastic uh, you know when we did all the chip sealing you know and the asphalt stuff we did we had maybe one or two minor issues you know and um and i think we had one tire go down you know but the amount of miles we put on and and like i said if we're running all those trucks at 600 tires so um you know they, they did really well i i thought uh i just got a had to order another load of fuel today which is Kind of disheartening. Back in June, we were paying uh, two sixty seven a gallon for diesel fuel. Uh, the low bid today was three three dollars and fifty cents a gallon. So it's went up since June eighty three cents a gallon. Well, you know that's that's bad. Um, you know, and again, the trucks have been doing real well. No major major breakdowns, but parts are getting astronomically expensive. You know. You get it's getting better, but it's still slow, you know, that nobody stocks nothing anymore. So you're getting it out of Chicago or wherever, and it's usually two, three days to get it. Uh, you know, but a turbocharger is, is $6,000, you know, and a clutch fan is $3,000. I mean, you used to be able to overhaul a motor for 6000 you know, and, and it's, the, they're really getting, getting expensive. Um you know, other than that, we we are working. I think they're down there today. We're gonna put a new pressure washer down at uh, O'Galley, so them guys got a nice, the same as all the other outlying shops, except Rock Falls. But um, you know, there's gonna be two new trucks down there. Well, one truck was a new truck is going down there this year, and there's one before that. You know, and uh, and the other one's not too old. So we're we're trying to. Uh, to invest and work on trying to get these trucks and keep them a lot cleaner than what they you know have in the past or whatever and try to, to push it um because we have to take care of these trucks and, and to sell it to these guys is is one thing you know um we are hoping in the future maybe to get a an underbody wash um we're kind of working a little bit with that 
um, to try and to get you know the, the salt off from underneath. Um, that's one of our big issues. When if we do take the trucks to to get warranty work and stuff on it, they they complain on how much rust is underneath. You know, but it's so hard when you're using the truck for what we use them for. It's hard to you know not have some. But anyway, any, anything we can do to to uh, to help with that. Um, so otherwise, I guess that's about all I have. Things have been going well, you know. And like I said, oh, we did get our our cutting edges. Um, they came in about two weeks ago uh, that we ordered, mm -hmm. so we're all set for uh, for this winter there, um, and that replenishes what we had to start with, uh, you know, the prior year. So, um, yeah, that's about all I got right now. You guys got any questions at all? Or? One question, not so much now, but like earlier this summer, there was a lot of wind, you know. So how many chainsaws does uh, the highway committee or highway have? Quite a few? Yeah. <laughs> um, pretty much pretty much every, every person has one available. Okay. So I guess if you look at it that way, we probably have 40 chainsaws. You know, and then we always have a few spares to go if we need them. Um, we try to keep at least one new one on hand, you know, but we keep that in the parts room, you know, in case one of them, you know, breaks, whatever. And do you ever like have a couple hour of safety training for them? Like once a year, I mean, just for mm -hmm. insurance purposes? Yeah, we do. And in fact, uh, we're having our fall safety meeting October 3rd is when it's planned for. And we have a gentleman that's done it in the past. We have him do it about every two or three years. Uh, his name is Rich Good. And the guys really like him, and he is scheduled to come in on October 3rd and do the safety training for us again, mm -hmm. uh, which is really, really beneficial. So, yeah, to answer your question, yes, we do, you know, are that's proactive on the chain because that's one of the, the most dangerous things we have, you know, that and like yeah. a steel cutoff saw, you know, guys get hurt, you know, with that type of, of thing. Anytime you have an accident, the first Question they ask, well, what kind of training, safety training do you have? Because you got mm -hmm. safety training, mm -hmm. that takes a lot of uh, liability away from, mm -hmm. from the county. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do that every year, right? Once a year, do you we do safety a, training? The fall, we do, yeah. you know, in house, our own safety yeah. training. Yeah. Yeah. Then we also, in the spring, we have our MSHAW training. Okay. And we already had that. Um, and then also at that MSHAW training, then we do our hearing test too, the okay. audiogram testing. So then we've got a record of their hearing, you know, and if, if they're starting to, uh, to lose their hearing or if they need ear protection, you know, then we're on top of it and we can provide it for them, you know, so they can't really blame us saying that, you know, that, hey, look, you guys, you know, wrecked my hearing and, you know, and, and liability factor on that. So we try to be, you know, like you said, the, the training, you know, and then also in the fall too, you know, we do training for our plow trucks. We always have the vendor come in and, and on our, um, uh, equipment and stuff and, and uh, how to run and operate them. Um, and there's a lot of other little things. If we buy a new piece of equipment, you know, generally we'll bring that in and do some task training on that. So they're kind of aware where, you know, all the switches and, and stuff are on it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's I think, very beneficial, you know, with our fall safety meeting. And we've done that, you know, for a long, long time. But no, so, that's good to know that mm -hmm. you are a mm -hmm. safety crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's so I got I got one question about the the blades. Mm -hmm. So are you, you know, obviously from 16, 17 to 17, 18, et cetera, you're upping the number of uh mm -hmm. rubber blades. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. and and that reduces the amount of, of carbon. Yeah, or here. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I was looking at the wrong spot. Yeah. yeah. So you're gonna keep longevity. you're gonna keep going that route. Well, what doesn't be what mean, doesn't keep reflect, adding to the right because right now right now pretty much all of our trucks have rubber blades on them, even the county trucks, and we found it really beneficial with the county trucks um, for not because uh, we plow mainly with triaxles. On our county routes so we don't have an underbody blade for scraping and stuff and the guys that use them you know really love them because they, they clean so much better that, that we really are kind of debating whether we actually need you know a, a underbody um i think last year we only used uh, 16 sets of underbody blades which is uh 
really great. I mean, that's hard to hand. Uh, and and those are pretty much on ninety four. You know that you know, that they've been used on the state the state routes. Um, so the reason the blades have been going up is because we put more on our county trucks. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you look at it, the the four foot carbide are actually your front plow blades. I guess my question was just based off of, you know, if they do a better job of cleaning, you know, mm -hmm. obviously that's beneficial. You know, it's what mm -hmm. that's what all the all the people want is the cleanest roads they can possibly drive. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and if they if they're cleaning better, it's probably even more efficient. Like they don't have to back up and redo something or whatever, you know. I mean, right. it just saves them time and wear and tear in the truck and et cetera, et cetera. But mm -hmm. so I guess my question was that you know, are we moving more towards that type of a blade versus the other blades? Yeah. That's what we've been doing. Sounds like uh, it. Yeah. Know. And and yeah, you know, the thing of it is is it's really hard to put a number on it. Yeah. No, no I get that. From what yeah. You know, we've been at to what we are now with the rubber blades, but we know there's a lot of beneficial things with it. You know, besides just the cleaning, you know, the extra cost and manpower, not having to replace the blades as much. Yeah. Um, and really, they're not that much more expensive. In fact, they came down a little bit um, than the conventional style with the carbide blade and the cover blade because you're actually putting two blades on it. Um, we put a, a backer blade on behind the rubber blades, a three foot carbide blade, and they're sitting up probably about an inch, inch and a half from the, from the uh, rubber blade. So when the rubber blade wears out, so we can get all the goody out of the rubber blade, yeah. then it'll fall down and hit that carbide blade so they can finish the day out, you know, if we so desire. And then it doesn't get into the moldboard of the, mm -hmm. you know, of the plow. And then you can reuse those as long as they don't go too far. So then you're just basically bolting on three new blades, you know, and every so that so the second time you put them on isn't near as expensive as the first time, you know, when you're only putting one blade on versus two blades. Um, so that's and, and then, like I said, the reason that, you know, we're buying more is because we're putting in more on our county county trucks, you know, and they are doing a better job. I feel, you know, that that's a good direction. To, to go in and there's townships now that are using it too you know they're they're seeing how well that they work and they don't work real well on on lime rock roads on gravel roads because they cut in so much um they bite in but once it's froze you know then it's then it's okay that's one thing we found yeah yeah and you're welcome to guys you want to come back and, and stop i can show you back and when you're done whatever you show you what they look like or whatever you know Always open to if you guys want to look at the stuff or look at our equipment trucks. You know, you know, you're always welcome to come back and, yeah. and see. So, yeah. So, any other, other questions? Okay. okay. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. Let's go. And I'll I'll just follow up uh, regarding those four plow trucks that Dan mentioned. Um, so we we had ordered last year the four international plow trucks. Um, they were supposed to be here in April, May time frame. Well, that got pushed off to June, July, August. Now, right now they're telling us we probably may see two of them here in September, and the other two we have no idea. We're really? basically we're anticipating getting pushed off to next year. Mm -hmm. um, so the two trucks that are potentially going to be here in September, um, it's probably going to take about three months, I would say, when it gets taken down to Universal. So at the earliest, maybe December, January, that we would have these two plow trucks being operational. Um, I did have a conversation with International or Mid-States uh, regarding this issue because um, it seems like international is having the biggest problem with the meeting their deadlines to get these trucks here. Um, they reassured me that the four trucks that we have scheduled for next year will be at our doorstep by the first quarter of next year. And they're telling me they're going to bring in all kinds of upper echelon of international reassuring us this. Um, I think the best way of doing that is put a little caption if they're not delivered on a certain date or the penalty. You know, then I think you get your attention. 
I, I think by doing that, they raise their prices, oh, but uh, yeah. good try. Yeah. Like, like Dan and I have been discussing, it, it, it might get to a point where we may not go with low bid, maybe. I, I don't know. We may have to explore maybe going with Freightliner or Peterbilt's or something like that. We may have to pay you know, a little bit more, but we can get them. Right. Um, other counties are having the same issue. Um, they have actually gone away with international trucks due to that issue. Um, so like I said, it's it, it's frustrating. Uh, you order trucks a year in advance and you still can't get them. Um, and then, like I said, Dan and I were, were counting on trading in four trucks. Now we got to stick more money into these four trucks that should have been gone in April. Um, so yeah, it's it's frustrating, and then we got to jockey money from each year to to help. Sure. It, it's just spitballs. Um, so I just wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, it, it's it's very frustrating, and hopefully they can correct the the issues going forward. Um, but that kind of concludes our our everyday operations. Um, we'll go into uh, I guess our engineering and and project updates. Um, our county road Z project, uh, obviously we continue doing that down by uh, south of uh, Downing or Downsville, I mean, towards O'Galley. Uh, we're probably halfway done, I would say right now with all the ditch work, uh, gravel base, all the widening, all that stuff uh, of the three mile stretch there. Um, so we have pro approximately a mile, mile and a half yet to, to go. Um, before we can even think about paving that that roadway. Uh, our County Road B projects from uh, 1229 to Packer Drive. Uh, we did have some good news on the 1229 to I-94 portion. Uh, we requested a change management request for additional funds for that uh, particular project, uh, which were awarded. Uh, so that's good news. Uh, so officially the state We'll be paying 80% of that project, and we will be on the hook for 20%. Uh, right now, that estimated cost is estimated at $8 million just to do that one mile stretch of road. Really? Due to the sheer cost of concrete right now is ridiculous. Um, so the caveat to that for both projects, uh, due to the the uh, funding that the additional funding that we got, we actually had to move the project let um, bidding a month earlier. Uh, so it was scheduled for December. Now it's scheduled for November, which I didn't have an issue with that. Um, so we are kind of scrambling to get everything to the DOT for for letting this here in, in November. Um, the North project there from I-94 to Packer Drive, that's a local project. Uh, but we will be letting that two weeks prior to the south portion, um, just so we we have the the potential to try to get the same contractor to do both projects. I think that'll be the best case scenario um, to reduce costs. Um, so yeah, both projects are anticipated uh, approximately eight uh, twelve million dollars for both projects, uh, which is was it a ten last year? I told that to somebody. Said you're crazy. It cost ten million dollars. Okay. Well, twelve million dollars is what it's estimated. Unreal. But that's not to say, like I said, the prices could come in a lot better. Contractors could be hungry. We don't know that. Could come in worse. We don't know either. Mm -hmm. So uh, is it stipulated that it's got to be cement if that is so high, or or can't you go that thick with the uh, like blacktop? So if we if we were to change it to asphalt, we we would have to do a whole new pavement design. Um, okay. There'd be additional engineering costs. They'd have to redo the whole plan, basically. Right. No, I'm not At saying do that. Is, is there a big difference if it would have been asphalt as compared to cement? Yes. the The cost would be cheaper to go with asphalt in the long run. In the long run, sure. concrete was cheaper because it lasts for the longer. longevity. Okay. Um, and if if we were to put asphalt out there, it'd probably be eight inches thick. Uh, I mean, it would be wow. very very thick asphalt. Uh, but yes, the price of asphalt is cheaper than concrete today, um, considerably different. So, um, but yeah, like I said, the 
if if we went to have the delays, maybe it would have saved us uh, approximately two million dollars last year. So hindsight's twenty twenty. Looking back, but Tony Road B project from Packer Drive to Double B. I don't know if uh, if any of you drive that, but we do have message boards out there right now. Uh, Monarch is scheduled to pave that road next week, um, starting next week, the fourteenth. Uh, so they it'll take approximately a week for them to pulverize the existing roadway and um, blade it. Uh, so they're anticipating the week the 21st for actual asphalt being placed down. Uh, we are restricting that to one lane during during uh, operations. Um, I did mention to the contractor if if we feel that there's safety issues going on or potential hazards to the employees that are working out there with the traffic volumes, we'll explore shutting the road down. Um, we don't need anybody getting hurt or you know, whatnot out there. Will you still be able road. to cross it though at certain roads if it's shut down completely? We, if, if we were to shut it down and depur it, we would we would basically shut the, the town roads down. So they can't even go that. across it. Yeah. Um, just because we don't want to have people going wherever they want to go. Um, so if we would detour it, we'd look at maybe double B through Cedar Falls to 25, which would not be pretty, but <laughs> that, it, it's been done before. It's been done. It's so, been done. Um, but like I said, right now, it's not, it's not scheduled to be shut down. It's scheduled to be just one lane restrictions. But we could take like Highway E too, off 40. Yeah. And then come in like through Correct. us, which wouldn't be that much yeah. further all the way. That'd be a lot shorter. So yeah. if you shut it down, would you put it get done faster? Yes. Is there a but, reason why you don't want to? Yeah, I guess due so. to the sheer volume of that roadway and the inconvenience of it and all the potential complaining that would happen <laughs> and inconvenience. But is there going to be complaining with being able to or having being stopped at a flagger for 10, 15 minutes? Because it's that's probably what's going to happen. Well, that's what I was getting. Like, I mean, we, but as soon as you said one lane, I'm like, well, that's like it could take forever to go that distance potentially. So we we were treating this project like it was a state road. Um, the contractor was treating it as if it was a state road, so the state doesn't shut the roads down when they when they do that. So can you um, alternate? One day it can be northbound, the next day it's southbound. And they shut down, down a portion of the road. It's not like they shut no, down. No, yeah, we'll only be. No, I, get, I, get, I, get, I get it. I get it. I just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah when, when it comes to the paving portion, all that's probably that going to be. going to happen. So yeah, it's like, yeah, let's get her done. Bigger area. Yeah. I think they should do a press release, though. Yeah. We, we are. I was going to I was gonna look at putting that out today. Um, at least on Facebook there. and stuff yeah. like that. I like your sign out there. That, yeah, the signs are there. nice to have out there already notifying yeah. people that it's going to be closed. For, for for, right now, it's scheduled for the 14th through roughly the 30th and 31st for completion. So they figure about two and a half weeks uh, they should be in and out of there. Um, can you can you create the sign that says "Drive carefully, or you'll lose your privileges"? <laughs> <laughs> we we used uh, uh, a nicer version, just says use alternate routes. Uh, I see that. Like I said, right. people, that. <laughs> people know the alternate routes. So I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. They will stay away from that road. It's just the other people won't. That's all. I would agree. There's a lot. I, I think day one when they're when they're waiting for a period of time at mm -hmm. I get late good. for work, they might change their mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's there's easier alternate routes, <laughs> but. I, I'm not anticipating the uh, the five thousand cars a day that come down that road. I, if I had to guess, there's probably going to be a thousand once everybody starts yeah. figuring it out. Yeah. Um, so hopefully all goes well, and yeah, we're looking for that to get done as soon as possible. It's really better. Um, so yeah, we did complete that bypass lane by Ellsworth Creamery. Um, so like I said, Monarch's coming next week to. Put asphalt back down. Q and W project uh, that we did have a schedule change there. We're anticipating that August twenty first now um, to start that project. Obviously, we'll, Isaac's been working diligently on taking some of the the new alignments of the curve and, and all that, and coming up with with grades for that, uh, so our crew can start work. 
Uh, we, the two bridges, uh, P17915 and P17925, um, the one on County Road P in the Irving, Irvington Creek, um, and then the other bridge on B by Flayton Creek up by Connersville. Uh, so we've, those were recently awarded 100% funding for construction, uh, not design, but construction. Uh, both structures are scheduled for 2025 and 2026. So uh, the one on B is for 2025 and the one on P is for 2026. So that's good news. Uh, I think we were anticipating, I don't, I don't remember what we had estimated costs on that. It was probably 600,000, I believe, for each one. And we don't have to pay a dime of it. So, well, we shouldn't say that the taxpayers of the, <laughs> the nation are paying for it. So. Um, staff are working on submitting bridge re re rehab reports. So Isaac's been uh, submitted all those to uh, the DOT. We had eight bridges that qualify for potential replacement. That's not including just county, that's town, villages, and uh, county. I believe we have three and the rest were on the towns and villages. Um, we did have a, uh, a few of them that did qualify without having to do a rehab report. Um, so we, we are looking at getting applications, which are due in October, um, to the DOT for those eight, eight bridges. So are those bridges all 80, 20 or 700 percent? We don't know that for sure at a minimum 80, 20. Oh, okay. Um, some might be completely traditional limited. cycle limits are 80, 20 match. Um, so like I said, with the whole BIL funding, the federal dollars that have been allocated to the state of Wisconsin, they're looking at replacing a lot of the bridges in the state. Um, so they're trying to find bridges and oh, okay. hmm. trying to put more money into infrastructure of uh, bridges. Um, so that's why they're looking at putting 100%. Hmm. Not guaranteed for this particular cycle that it'll be 100%, 100% but at a minimum 80, 20. Okay. So you go out and look at them and the highway department says, they're not uh, so the DOT or you the yeah. DOT has a formula based a formula on and that's so, what you go by. so we do the inspections we submit it to the state um they have a whole formula okay. of ranking and okay. the sufficiency ratings is what they go off of hard to explain the sufficiency ratings so yeah, it's not nice. I don't want to go down that road but they are doing away yeah. with the sufficiency ratings um so yeah it's based on the condition state of the the bridge um Currently, if they're below 50, yeah. it's automatic eligibility. And then um, the rehab reports, there's some some bridges that qualify based on certain conditions that if their rating is above 50, which is new this year. Okay. Yeah, in particular, the, the timber structures, they're, they're emphasizing the replacement of timber bridges. Sure. Um, so a lot of those are in that. They're above the sufficiency rating, but their condition state warrants it to be replaced. That makes sense. No. Um, so that's where these rehab reports uh, we have to shouldn't say it, we have to jump through a hoop. Um, <laughs> submit this first, then they tell us go ahead and apply for the bridge replacement application, and we got to fill that out. Okay. So it's it's a process, but uh, like I said, they're looking for for bridges to to put funding towards. Sure. Um, we are looking at structures under 20 feet, uh, the statewide, they actually did budget for that. So the, a lot of the towns in general, they can't even tell you where their structures under 20 are. They don't even have an inventory. We at the county do, mm -hmm. but the towns don't. So the state of Wisconsin, obviously you see it in the news. Uh, um, I think there was a milk truck that recently down in La Crosse went over a, a structure under 20 and it collapsed. So there is no ratings, there's no inspections processes of, of these structures. So the state wants to get that into the program too now um, to actually start inventory and rating these and possibly funding these structures. Because um, I think we in Dunn County, we have 50 of them on our county system that we are aware of. So that's like a box culvert, a larger diameter metal culvert, um, anything between six foot and 20 foot, basically. Um, anything below that, we we have an inventory, but they don't want to inspect. Um, so that's more more to come on, on the DOT side. 
um, which we're working through that process. Um, so we are looking at uh, looking at uh, a pedestrian walking path uh, between the judicial center and the government center. I'm sure you've all heard that at the county board. Um, so the county surveyors uh, they did the survey work. Um, <laughs> we have all that data. Isaac's brought it in. Um, he's got a preliminary design, an estimate completed. Um, we have been in, Isaac's been in contact with the DOT because there is a, a portion of this uh, particular pedestrian bike path uh, would have to be on state's right of way, the DOT's right of way, just in front of the judicial center. It actually goes all the way out to the parking lot is where their right of way is. Um, mm -hmm. So that it gets tight for, I think it's what, 150 feet? Maybe yeah, where we're, more. yep, a little bit more, but yeah. But uh, right now, based on the slopes out there, um, obviously we're all familiar with that hill where the trees are, where all the deer like to cross there, just between the government center and judicial. Uh, there would have to be some trees removed um, to try to keep it off the road right away. And it's more of a flat area, so we're not building retaining walls and all that stuff where the costs dramatically. Are you on the uh, you know, south side of that hill or north side hill? We're on the south side. South. Okay. Yeah, and this is just the the bike and pedestrian that whole the road behind on the north side. Yeah, that's a whole other deal. Okay. Um, so how about the uh, the city uh, bike trail net? Does that end at the? It all, it ends right at the judicial center. Okay. And then it ends at the government center, kind of by Purveya in front of the neighbors. Okay. So that's so there's connection. no way between. So we'd be looking at trying to connect those two. Uh, the city's been on board with it. That'd be something if it if it gets built and when. Um, I guess that's something the county will have to look at is who maintains it, who's in charge of who controls it. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, so would it be some kind of a cost split between the city and the county? I, I guess I'm not getting involved with that. That's that's a Chris question. <laughs> As of right now, I believe there's ARPA funds that were allocated to that. Okay. But I don't know that. I don't know the details of it. So you think they'd want to do it if, if they went to the expansion going by the I-94 bridges to get across there, make that move, think they'd want to connect it, not have uh, a dead end. And they're all they're they're all for it. They okay. they really want to, but I like I said, it comes down to if the county's yeah. gonna pay for it, why is the city not that they're not gonna say nothing? So that's that's one thing we'd have to look into. Okay. So does there have to be any guardrail put up? No. There's enough room between that hill and the road to safely yeah and, and, yeah, would... and Isaac said like I said we got we got he's got a preliminary design put together and we were going to have a meeting with Chris and Scott and with facilities and go over it and come up with we got an estimated cost uh Cedar Core with the city uh they actually came up with an estimated cost as well so we can kind of compare apples to apples um, they're asking that was a little more extravagant with retaining walls and a lot of engineering costs involved with it. So, so would it be that wide or be the same as the basically be a 10 foot wide path? Okay. Same, a... same as what's in front of Purveyor. It's basically just an asphalt and stokey. Okay. It's just a 10 foot wide asphalt path. It's wide enough to get your car now. <laughs> well, so it, basically honestly, you would run so here or oh, there. And then down Stokey, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. To connect the two. The bike connect them and, it, and I mean, it, it would be a lot, it'd be very beneficial for our own employees mm -hmm. frequent between the two buildings. Yeah. Um, obviously, there is a lot of people that walk down Highway 12 that come out of the jail you see that? Yeah. <laughs> or Huber yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of people that see that. That are traveling That's not along that either, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, talking with the DOT, it didn't seem like it was a big deal. Like they were very supportive of it as long as they yeah. had yeah. Anything, but time. Yeah. People are walking the pedestrians on there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, the only, That's the only why downfall I is, I mean, obviously, That's why with I that hill section, that it gets a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, we would have to cut some trees down. And mm -hmm. I, I don't want to get all touchy feely, but that's a concern. Um, well, we can plan. we'll plant some somewhere to make up for it. Correct. I mean, the, we're trying to limit the, the impact as yeah. much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, we do have to follow pedestrian uh, uh, handicap accessibility 
Right. Um, so we're looking at that. You got to have handicap ramps and, and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. um, trying to get through that hurdle because um, there is max slopes that you can have um, without having a, you, you kind of have to design a flat spot. If it's more than 5% grade, you got to, for every two foot of elevation change, you got to have a flat spot. Really? And then you can, for, for wheelchair accessibility. Oh. So. And actually, that hill is right at five percent. I think is what we look yeah, at. So yeah. we wouldn't need to do anything. It, a couple feet. It uh, worked out pretty well. Just mm -hmm. under five. But yeah, we're working through that, and I just wanted you to be aware of the situation. Uh, so, but I guess that concludes my staff report. Unless Isaac's got something he wants to add. Uh, no, no. You were talking one time about taking a tour. Of uh, like different difficulties with pony, is that still yes. something you're thinking about? I, I, I do want to do that. Um, and like I said, I was going to talk with you. Uh, I mean, we can even talk after the meeting, whatever, but just try to come up with a date. Um, I, I did talk with St. Croix, Eau Claire, um, counties. They basically said, You pick a date, we'll be there as long as it's not a Saturday or Sunday. But, um, but yeah, that's I, I'd really like to. Um, you want to see a really really nice facility Eau Claire is the one to look at I, I've toured that and I know where my tax dollars go <laughs> it's a beautiful facility it should move to the county <laughs> we, our facility would literally be uh probably a quarter of what they have if is that, that right if that <laughs> uh -huh. it's it's a magnificent building so and what did it cost 30 million, 30, 31 million. They have a lot of more equalized value. Just put it in perspective for sure. <laughs> and I'm not asking for a new facility. I just want something where we can house our, our equipment. You can help us out by like building the house here in downtown. You ever thought about that? Because I, you're paying for that one down if, there. If the housing market was a heck of a lot cheaper, I would. <laughs> no, let's not go into that. <laughs> that's, no, that's ridiculous. I just get mad about that. Yeah, I'm going to increase more than they did. So, but yeah, that's all I have. Good. Where are we at here? Number seven, six, six C. Six, six C. C, yeah. Okay, there we go. I was going to say we have good financials, yeah. Yeah, so the, the highway financials, um, Looking at it through the the month of uh, July, uh, we're still trending towards that uh, that three million dollar uh, projected surplus. Um, as as we noted before, um, we we are looking at taking a a portion. We had allocated two point seven million to the county road B project that was supposed to happen this year. Um, so we're looking at trying to carry that forward into next year to help offset the the increased costs. Um, so that's that's good news. We're, we're like I said, we're trending that we're going to have a, the money to do that. Um, these are projections. I, I have not run through the projections in detail. Um, so like I said, these numbers are based on our projections, um, what work we have completed thus far and what we have projected going forward. Um, so I, like I said, I have not had time to actually go through this in detail with all, all the expenses and revenue and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but it is trending, like I said, the, the same as previous months. So a question I, I would have is, um, if you're projecting like a $3 million carryover, is that because projects are being put off or not being built in this year that were budgeted? So... Yeah, so the the B project was basically okay. was budgeted for this, this year. Yeah. So that's in this projection. So okay. we we have taken basically that two point seven million that we had allocated to that project and projected that out. So that's that's in this projection. So if you take these projects that are not going to be done, are we close into being on budget? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, if you would, like I said, if you take the two seven out of the three million, we're three hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah, but it's close, but uh, in in the positive. Okay. And like I said, that's based on our projections. That's not saying 
I, yeah. like I said, it's it's only as good as it's projected. Sometimes I got some so, dumb questions, but I just you know, hopefully hopefully concrete costs and equipment can also come down a little bit. Lot. So yeah. Yeah, right. So that two point seven will actually fit <laughs> I, 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 yeah. versus the inflation that we're seeing. Yeah. We'd rather have you ask questions, Gary, than yeah, yeah. Okay. walk uh, away not and everybody on the same page. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like I said, I don't know if there's any questions regarding the financials. No, that's good. As long as it's in the positive and not in the negative, yep. we're all happy. Yep. <laughs> all right. Any other questions on check reports? If not, thanks, Justin. Number 7A, approval of measures. No one question. What's this? Highway road material for Dennis Steinmeier, 520 and 220. So that's straw bales. Uh, gotcha. He bales or whatever. Just that. wondering what it was. Ditch, ditch, grass. Yep. Whatever. That's fine. That, yep. that we use for mulch. That's fine. Stems. Any other questions? Will we approve the vote? Is there a second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any other discussion on the vote, please? If not, all in favor? All, all right. right. All right. Can we close? Most fastest. 70 salt brine wedge tanks. So a few meetings back, I believe I discussed this. Um, the four trucks that we actually have coming that are supposed to come this year. <laughs> um, we had spec basically little 150 gallon wedge or tailgate tanks, mm -hmm. which are pretty much worthless in today's world um, due to the, the sheer push by the DOT. Um, to try to get more liquid instead of granular materials down um, due to the sheer cost of the, the granular. Um, so we did look at, so we did scrap those four tanks uh, as well as all the, the connecting parts, all the stuff that goes with it. Um, and we did look at these uh, wedge tanks, so which is basically a slide in poly wedge tank that you slide in the back of the, the box of the truck. Um, it'll be like a triangle configuration, a wedge style configuration, and then you can put salt on top of it or salt sand on top of it. Um, the DOT has just recently, this actually this past month, um, set uh, hourly rates for these pieces of equipment. Uh, so they have certain hourly rates based on the capacity of the, the salt brine capacity tanks. So I believe it's uh, zero to 500, 500 to 750 and 750 to anything above a thousand gallons is the highest hourly rate that you will get. These particular wedge tanks that we quoted um, are for 1,075 gallons, uh, which we would put a, a, we would have to have a larger pump to be able to pump either all liquid uh, so we would have a spray bar that would be underneath our um, spreader. So we could either have, have a switch basically throw on all liquid or you could put all granular down or mix it, whatever you want to do. Um, so that's what everybody's going to. Um, St. Croix actually, they've purchased uh, three or four of them recently. Um, Taylor County has used these in the past. Um, they are using them currently as well. They've had nothing but good luck with them. Um, the biggest, the wedge tanks, yes, yeah. from this particular company too. Um, they're actually on the east side of the state. Um, can't remember where they're from. Somewhere yeah, on the so, east side, so, Sheboygan or yeah. something. Um, but they they go through Universal. Um, so how much? Them. Does that take down the amount of salt sand you have on that? Is it so traditionally, or? can I say legal loads? Um, it, traditionally, on a tandem axle, we we would put probably fifteen tons on there. 
Um, we were shooting for 10 tons now, so we'd oh, okay. be reducing it by about five tons. Um, like I said before, I want to push. I want to push our own employees. That liquid is a heck of a lot cheaper. Um, we're that is we're trying to do something to be more environmentally friendly. We're trying to also reduce the cost of the the granular salt. Um, Cause you gotta mix, the, gotta mix the salt with the, the brine, right? Yeah. So basically, it's salt water is okay. what brine is. So how much? less salt per mile are you using with the brine as compared to salt sand? Is it a percentage? We're, we're, we're still in the process of getting our employees to buy into it. Okay. Um, the problem we have is if you would do liquid and granular at the same time, you can probably, uh, 300 pounds per lane mile is an average what we do. Okay. That's the settings on our trucks. Maybe instead of 300 pounds per lane mile, we can do 200 to help reduce that, that granular quantity. Mm -hmm. Our crews are still hell bent that they want to use 300 pounds, oh. regardless if it's liquid or not. That's what they're so used to. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the capacity right now to put a lot of liquid down. Mm -hmm. When we only have 150 gallons, it yeah. literally doesn't go very far and you're out. And we still have 15 tons of salt on this truck. Mm -hmm. So they're just putting granular down. So this is, like I said, this is what we we have to start exploring is to be able to reduce this cost. Um, it, they are more expensive than what uh, the 150 gallon tanks were on this truck um, that we have scrapped. Um, obviously, 15, almost 15, five a piece. Um, but these truck, these tanks, they tell us they can last forever. Obviously, the one thing is you can't keep them in the sun uh, when they're not in use. Uh, they will actually break down the welds. So basically, it's a plastic weld. Um, so that is another concern is if we start in, in, implementing all these wedge tanks on all of our trucks, where are we going to store it? Right. Um, there's another reason why it would be nice to have a building to put this in. <laughs> Um, otherwise we, we could tarp them. We could put them outside and just put a tarp over it. Like, like I said, there's, there's options, but, um, when you're talking when they're not in use, not in use. Yes. Okay. That's okay. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. Yeah. So in the, obviously from April to whatever, November or October. Mm -hmm. August. Yeah. August. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> So Chris obviously likes winter. <laughs> Do you have any? Uh, I, I drive by here a lot, so I peek over, try to keep an eye on, and learn about what's out here and not out here. But is there any like the old style lean tos or anything like that? You know, where you you'll see you'll drive by a farm and they'll have a. Uh, a pole shed type building, but one wall would be missing so animals can get in and out, get out of the shade, they can get fed in there, drink water in there, whatever. I, I guess I'm asking, is there any just kind of where you can just drive a truck in, it's out of the sun, it's out of the, it's out of the, um, you know, like anticipating having a hailstorm or something like that where they can get underneath, but the, it's not in a full building. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. <laughs> no, like absolutely. It's three-sided with a roof on it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we've we looked at that. Um, I don't know how well it would work with this particular building. Right. But like our, what we call our White House to Steel Shed yeah. um, building, we could put a lean-to on something like that. I, I guess I'm, I'm not, not trying not to... Not a large capacity. I mean, yeah. it wouldn't take a lot. Um, but obviously, there is a sheer cost to that as well to do that. Right. Um, a lot of times, if there would be a salt shed that was being built, uh, we would uh, design a, a lean-to for those. Yeah. Now, the DOT won't allow lean-tos, mm. um, but that's not to say we couldn't do it with local funds. But Right. I guess, I guess I'm asking, or bringing it up as, as a possibility with, you know, winter if we move forward with some type of new addition or whatever to have that on part of the building where you can just yeah tuck stuff away you know oh absolutely just, just the extra 
yeah, extra the, protection. We have one lean to right now that's on our, our big salt barn. Yeah. Um, and that's where we keep all of our, our EMAT, our mulch, stuff like that. Right. So when the skunks and stuff come in, it's outside, not inside the building. Yeah. Because um, they love going in there. Yeah. Um, but we do have like signs and stuff that we want to keep out of the sun. Um, yeah. It does help, but it, it, we fill it up very, very quick. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, I, I, there's never enough space. I, well, know, I know that. So, no, me, I, I think it's definitely. If we can build efficiency and say, hey, we can create 15 more stalls along this whole end of this building for yep. a portion of the cost, we don't have to heat it. We don't have to do this, do this or that. Mm -hmm. And you can still tuck things away and, well, and it, it, save it, it from the sun and some of the elements that. Yeah, it'd be nice to even where you could put trailers or you could trailers put and whatever a truck that's being and, used on a daily basis you know, that's fitting under that. Oh, yeah. I, definitely worth exploring. Sorry, got us off track. A little bit, but <laughs> anyway, back to the well. It, it, you know, you were talking about the tanks not being able to be in the sun. You know, yep. and that's where it just popped in my head. And we we have plenty of room out here right now. I mean, if we would have to just. Put them off to the side and put a tarp over it we could yeah i i guess i'd you know, i know that works the wind yeah i i don't know if i want to dive into full-blown wedges on all of our trucks wedge tanks i mean maybe we go to a different box style where you can put tanks on the side i mean that's something we can explore too but unfortunately we, we have four trucks coming right now that we can't change the box configuration. There are, it's already too late. Um, so this is our only option. If we want capacity, we have to go with a wedge tank that goes in the box. And these would be used on state roads then? And yeah, so that, that's the intent is- So we get the state extra, system. You know, yeah, reimbursement for this. So I mean, it's gonna help pay for these patients. So, well, absolutely. Here. So you're looking for like four of them? Is that what you're I, thinking? I'm only, I'm only shooting for two because I, I know two trucks are two supposedly trucks. coming this year, and I want to see how those two go first. Mm -hmm. And basically, from what this manufacturer tells me, they could have it to us within eight weeks. So, I mean, if we like it, we could look at exploring the other two trucks, whatever, next year. Or whatever. But I, I, I want to go through a, a slow step to not to see how these work first before we dive into it even more. So, I think of the higher end, there's two, I think it's worth the flooring. I mean, the other work. So we we got to have capacity to put that yeah. down. That's, you go from 175 to 1,070, or whatever. That, that's a lot of, a lot of difference. So how many miles could you go then with a big 1,000 gallon tank? Um, so tr traditionally, if you're going to put all liquid down, uh, it's 40 gallons per mile is okay. traditional. If you're going to do that, 40 to 80 gallons. Um, so I would say on average, probably that 40 gallons a mile if you're going to do straight liquid. And how many miles is like the 94 from St. Croix to Eau Claire County? Any idea how long that is? Exit 32 to 56. Let's say. Yeah. Roughly, yeah, the 26, 27. I want to say whatever it is sometimes. Yeah, and I mean, if we're going to be doing it on the interstate, I, I don't know if we're going to go all liquid on the interstate. I don't. Well, they still I don't, want salt on the interstate. Yeah, and that's why they're building the new salt. But if we can, if we can reduce our granular costs out on Highway 25 and 72 and the 170, okay. that's where I think we would see the benefit of going liquid. Uh, there's a lot of times where we we early winter late winter where we're literally just salting the bridge decks yeah. where I think we could just get away with putting liquid on it. Well, okay. straight liquid and not have to do that. Right. Um, like I said, we got to have our, our own employees buy into this and everybody's stubborn. Everybody's got that in them. <laughs> it's, new. Uh, it's new. This is new. It's probably, they're not going to like it, but Put a young guy in the truck. Put a new guy in the Nobody that knows any different. There you go. Exactly. If it was that easy, Brian. Yeah, I, I know what to say. So is there any temperature difference that it works better for straight salt as compared to the brine? So, so brine, they, they basically say brine is cut off as 19 degrees. 
um, before you start needing to put additives in it. Once okay. you start putting additives in it, it gets more costly than the actual granular. Mm -hmm. oh, um, sense. But but in winter time, I I think really... like early winter and late winter. I okay. think we're 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 still in those twenties and thirties yet. Yeah. I think that'd be great. Okay. Maybe not in January and December where we can at least blend it to help reduce the granular. Sure. That's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. The increase charge out of rate wasn't, didn't we figure about two years would pay for the yep. tank because of that increased charge out rate. And then that didn't even take into account if there's less sand, salt sand than used mm -hmm. to. And like I said, these, these trucks uh, or these tanks, we can slide them in any truck. Yeah. Um, these two particular tanks would be specifically designed for the actual trucks that are coming. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's any oh, switches, and all that yeah. Stuff. I mean, we would have this has to have a larger pump, and our trucks currently don't have the larger pump. Okay. Um, so yeah, we would have to. So how, and I'm how, not looking at retrofitting everything going no. all of our trucks, but only how are those them. tanks anchored to the uh, box? Because you got to have that your tailgate open if you got the brine and the salt sand, so you can't just have the tailgate hold it in place. And they've got to have some kind of so basically they're going to have angle iron um, where it'll bolt down to the the box. Okay. And then they they want to keep them two inches, I believe it was two inches the actual tanks would be two inches away from the box itself um oh, okay. and then they have rubber flaps on the top so nothing gets below it um hmm. but yeah they they have some mechanism that attaches to the to the tank or the box i mean the sheer weight of it probably isn't going to move but yeah. you know, and it has built-in baffles so it's you're not going to feel the slosh in the okay. back and forth. Would you have to take the framework out when you use it for summer for hauling blacktop or? Yeah, you're going to have to take the wedge tanks out. Yeah, right. And I don't know about the framework. The yeah, framework was. Yes, that's something we'll have to look at. Well, what do you think? Want to try two? What are you guys going to do? I'd like to try two. Need a motion. I'll make that motion. For a second. A second. Motion been made and seconded to approve two wedge tanks. Any discussion or other discussion? You ever sell that truck we had on auction? Did you put it, one of those trucks on auction? Pick up. No, that one of those. Oh, this, we did it. You didn't sell them? So, based on uh, not knowing when these trucks are coming, we actually need those trucks. Yeah. So, we have not put That's them on the auction site. Most been made second to try to buy two wedge tanks for the two new trucks. Uh, all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion moved for you. Uh, seven C highway budget reports. This is where the sticker shot comes in, everybody. <laughs> I read it. Um, so I provided a uh, summary of the budget request for 2024. Um, I believe you'll be seeing this again, but uh, mm -hmm. we just wanted to make sure that you get the uh, first official copy and thanks before everybody else sees it. Um, but we did compare this request for 2024 based on the 2023 budget. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you kind of look at page three of three, um, the overall budget request for 2024 is that 19264246 mm -hmm. um, in 2023's budget was 18 million two twenty four. Um, the problem that you're going to see though is uh, our revenue. Our revenue source uh, where is it here? I don't know if we show that in detail. But obviously, uh, we, we don't have enough revenue to account for that 19 million. Um, so I believe we are. Yeah. 
7,600. So that, if you look at that tax levy of 8.9 million, that's what we would need to basically pay for our, our request. Uh, above and beyond what our GPA, that's on page three. Yeah, page three. Um, yeah, if you look at the tax levy, 2020, oh, okay, 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 8.9 okay. million, which is 5 million more. And we're currently getting 3.7 in 2023. Mm -hmm. um, our vehicle registration, we're, we're saying seven, 787,000 is what we're going to be generating in 2024. Uh, fund balance, we would be utilizing $1.3 million of our, our fund balance or carryover from previous year, years. Mm -hmm. um, ARPA funds, $420,000 for ARPA. Um, and then bridge petition levy of $55,000 is what we're estimating. Um, all other revenues, as you can see, um, that, in, that can include our general transportation aid, um, the, the revenue we get from the DOT, the towns, all that generates that that 7.6 million that we're estimating. Which is um, down quite a bit. Yes. So the the, the big thing is uh, almost $9 million of tax levy just to, to pay for our operational expenses uh, proposed for, for 2024. Um, so it would be basically above and beyond uh, what five point two million dollars of the three point seven that we currently have. Um, I did want to show you. Um, there is, if you look at some of these uh, program titles, so county maintenance. There's the appendix two. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to show you the maintenance, how how we come up with these dollars, dollar amounts. Um, and I, I don't want to say, I, I, I can tell you, I'm, I'm not asking for the world, um, for this budget. It's, uh, we're, we're not doing any frivolous things. We're not trying to pave the hundred miles of roads. We're not trying to, we're literally trying to keep our system going, um, as well as trying to make some improvements with our road construction. So, uh, 2.7 that we're carrying over doesn't help lower it any of this, does it? It's gonna help, but it's not it's not in there. Okay, okay. for okay. our 2024. Okay. Okay. It's not part of that levy, yes. yeah. 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 Okay, okay. That's what I meant. So as you can see for the, the highway maintenance, signing hundred thousand dollars for for a total budget um, and breakdown of the labor equipment and materials. Um, I have not, if if you look at uh, this budget, I have not included our equipment costs requests. It's basically labor and materials is all we're we're looking at in this budget. Mm -hmm. um, payment markings that's contracted out. The one thing is that I did increase the overlay and patching, um, not dramatically. Um, I I do want to allocate approximately a million dollars to overlaying and patching like i said before it doesn't go very far we think a million dollars is gonna pay from here to timbuktu <laughs> um we don't think that. but that <laughs> literally will get us about five miles of paving mm -hmm. and that's literally throwing a band-aid inch and a half uh the two inch overlay on a road um but we have a a lot of those roads that all of a sudden miraculously, I should say miraculously, we do know they're going to happen sooner or later, but mm -hmm. we have a bad winter and all of a sudden that will be, we might as well put the road to gravel is what it would, would be more beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, so I did account for that. I, I do want to be aware that's where a, a majority of this maintenance is. Um, we still have to mow and spray. We have to brush, we have to shoulder, we have to maintain guardrail. Um, this is stuff that we are mandated we have to do. Um, so like I said, being being number seven in the state of Wisconsin for the most county roads to maintain, it's unfortunate, but comes with the, the territory to mm -hmm. the cost to maintain them. 
Um, where's our population stand? Though? We're like at 45 ish thousand, right? Yeah, we're, 45. We, we are the lowest. Yeah, so we're the, the lowest. population that's equalized value. That's how you get your money. And that's where we're so low compared to everybody else. Well, no, that's, that's uh, yeah, I'm just, it, that's what I said. It's, we have we have the seven most miles of road and the lowest population. Did you say? Based on if, if you look at the if you look at the top ten, top ten counties, we are the lowest. There's what seventy counties, seventy two, seventy two counties in the state, right? Mm -hmm. We're middle of the road. We're probably okay. that yeah. population wise. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, you look at like yeah. Iron County and all that stuff, right, it has like four thousand people at the right. entire yeah. county. We're right, well and above and beyond that. But yeah, okay. I just they all, they they also only have it because I think that <laughs> I think that's got to be, I don't, it's got to be part of the explanation of you know why this has to happen is because you know our population sits here yet our needs are up here because of the infrastructure of the. In this particular case, the roads. And, you know? and, and, and I also want to express everything's getting heavier, yeah. bigger, mm -hmm. everything. I mean, look at the farm equipment. Well, look I was just going to say the, the semi traffic. That, that'd be another interesting forward. dynamic on top of it is how much farm equipment travels on our roads compared to some of the other counties, you know? Yeah. And I, I don't know if we'd be able to compare that. No, I, I, I'm not saying either. In but general, is an agricultural company. Exactly. Yeah. And I'd it's, say it's a good thing. It's good. Yeah. Uh, nobody wants that to go away, you know, at all. Grow it, as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, I hope so. But, it, you know, it does have a factor on longevity of some of our roads, you know, and it's really not much different than being a county where a major freeway runs through. Mm -hmm you know, and how much off traffic yep. get on the roads and stuff like that, that we have to pay for because we live in, in here. But, you know, I, like I, and, I and the state, state does their part, I guess, with their 80, 20 matches and they're just, and they're yeah, for you all know, all so they get, they, they get it, you know, but I'm, there's a lot of people that don't understand that. I, I'm not sure I did either or, or paid attention to it. That's one of the reasons I got involved was because it was like it, you know, it was but yep. And and that's where like Chris is basically in, is trying to communicate with right. the community right. and yep. we're looking at trying to put together highway funding, where yeah. our revenue comes from and, and all no, that. No, try no. to explain that to people. Exactly. Um obviously the, the state has passed the the share shared revenue. <laughs> Um, which is going to increase the county. Yeah. Um, I don't know where that money gets divvied up, but um, they're trying. I, I would say the DOT is trying to to help offset a lot of this infrastructure cost, but it's just like I said, it's not it's not enough. I mean, we're so far behind. It mm -hmm. takes more to catch up now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when you're talking about the budget, what kind of feedback are you getting from the county manager? I mean, are you supposed to be like, you know, well, you have to put your budget down 2% or are you only can raise it so much? I so, mean, what, what we were told is to present to the county board what our operational expenses are, okay. what you need to operate. Okay. Um, this, is, this is what it's going to cost for us to continue our operations. Um, and like I want to point out, I... It's unfortunate our B projects, both, that's a huge cost for next year. I mean, if we would take B out of the equation, it wouldn't look as bad. Okay. But the problem is, is we can't continue to do 10 miles, eight to 10 miles of roads each year. When we have 425 miles of roads, we have to look at 20 to 30 miles each year. I'm trying to get to that, but unfortunately, I can't do that in 2024 just due to the sheer cost of B. Mm -hmm. um, I we are looking at the five-year plan right now. Um, what we have traditionally allocated for construction, and that's where we do our eight to ten miles of roads, where we're actually doing our county road Z projects. We've only al allocated our levy dollars, so that three the three seven is what we've been we've been allocating to them. That's, just, that's getting us eight, eight to 10 miles of roads. 
So it's like, if we want to do 20 miles, we're going to have to double that. So I'm, I'm actually presenting in our five-year plan a $7 million construction budget, budget set of four. if we want to make headway. But I, like I said, I got to present it to you and let you know that this is what we need to do. And if we would need, if we only have so much money, this is where we got to cut. But like I said, I, I can't continue just showing $3 million, $3 million, and we're doing eight, eight miles of roads every year. And everything's hunky dory. So that's that's where I it not only next year, but years to come, it's gonna continue down the same process path. Um, it just may not be county road B. It might be looking at four other roads that we want to put some new pavement down or whatever, where we can get some miles put out. I mean, like right now it's I, <laughs> we have to do our pacer rating this year for for pavement ratings uh, on a scale of one to ten. I I don't know what it looks like. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm getting individuals calling me up and even town officials. When are you going to do County Road O north of Nap? Okay. Not in our five year plan. I don't know what to tell you. County Road do yeah, so that's about as rough as any other road. Rough. Yeah, well, road gear, Yay. Nobody, I did plan. Did you? <laughs> oh, but, I'm, but it's going to cost us about seven million to eight million dollars a year yeah, to do yeah. it. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to get kicked out. Yeah. You know, we got some like hard choices. So why should we always be sub subsidizing the neighbors, taking money like what you know other departments? You know, we gotta. I, I guess I don't want to go down that no, path. I, don't. I, I mean, that, that'll be a, that'll be a whole. County board what discussion. I'm, what I'm just saying is, you know, you got to subsidize that, but you're supposed to be making money or at least breaking even. So that's taking money away from every other department. So historically, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, historically, there's only been two years time in which the county has actually had to subsidize the neighbors. Hmm. 2013, the year that they were built, and last year. Oh, sorry, uh, 2021. They will have had to in 2022 as well. It's just that the audit report's not done. Okay. So that would be three years of the last 10 years or 12, 10, 2013 till now. But just so you're aware too, though, our levy that we had prior mm -hmm. about yeah. five, six years ago was about $5 million. Now it's yeah, down to three, half, three and a half, half, three, seven. So, so it has did, been gone down. Where did that $2 million dollars go then? Don't ask me. A lot of it probably <laughs> went to human services, sheriff's department, uh, just all everywhere. salary. All, all departments had yeah. an increase. Uh, I mean, everywhere. Yeah. Human services. Uh, just quick question, too. How much is this going to be presented at the end of this month at the general? So the plan, our, our plan for the 30th is to, um, is to show you um, the ask and the gap. Okay. And then what makes up that gap? So this paper is wrong. So our, our you you get those too. You get you get all of the transparency of the behind the scenes, but we're just not going to go through oh, all okay, of them okay, okay. That's what line by line by line. Okay. Um, but yeah. So, so so highway will have the bullseye on its back for the gap. Well, yeah. Sure. But but as a, in, again in a in a sort of in context, at this time of a budget year. We almost always are at have about a five million dollar gap, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a six. Yeah. So we're not. This isn't like. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. No. I'm just saying it's. This isn't like. Oh my gosh, we usually have a five million, and now we have a ten. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have. Do we, do we do we know about the shared revenue yet? Like yes. what? How much that hit? Yeah. I know there's an extra million. Bad. Okay. And is that included with that gap? It is. Okay. So we are going to get like these papers from every yep. department then, yep. and then just yep. summarize. Yep, and then we'll try to okay. kind of roll it up so that okay. it's just just more digestible. Mm -hmm. so it's like kind of yeah, and each department is going is getting presented to their committee. Yes, this budget. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So our our goal is so, so um, there's cost to continue. You know, last year your fuel cost a thousand dollars, and this year it costs twelve. Or 1500 I don't know, whatever. That's a cost to continue. 
then there's a cost to expand. Mm -hmm. You know, like we want to do more than we used to do. So we want to sort of, so we want to give you cost to continue, cost to expand mm -hmm. so that there's a decision-making point around like, this is what it just costs to continue to do what we do now. And then this is what departments have proposed to do extra. There isn't a lot of extra. Wish list. Yeah, a wish list. Proposed new positions. Proposed new positions. Whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but exactly. Like the, okay. the cost to continue that 3.7 in construction, that's uh, eight to 10 miles of road per year. So that's to do all the county roads, that's 40 years roughly, right, Dustin? Yep. And you're trying to get it to 20 to 25 years, which is more, which yeah. is a typical lifespan of asphalt roadway. Around Not, 20 is going to be over 40, so yeah. Yeah, 40. We're going to be at 50 so we can pretty quick. Right. Yeah, we, I was, like I said, putting the five-year plan together. And we're applying for uh, state state aid and all that for some of these projects going forward in mm -hmm. years to come. Um, County Road I, I was looking at doing that, and that was anything that was last done on that was in 1967. Jeez. I was just going to ask and, if you knew what the oldest road is that has been, you know, redone. Right. Probably that. I, I would say our County Road disease and stuff like that were done in the 60s. I, I've had individuals that are in their 60s and 70s that said they've never seen anything done on it. <laughs> As like the unfortunate thing is, is we can't get a road that we built today to last 40 years. There's no way. We have a hard time getting in the last 25 years. Yeah. And I don't know yeah. if it's due to the sheer heavier equipment, heavier loads, the more traffic, volume. More volume. the quality of the materials. Probably all of the above. It, right? Because like that you know that's that like come or be where we're gonna redo. When was that last done? It didn't seem that long ago, but I know it's farther than I thought of. It was 19 years ago. 19 years ago. I looked it up. And look at, that has to get replaced. I mean. And and look when that actually started deteriorated about 10 years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that was a 10 year old road before it was like. And, I mean, that, and that was built to state standards. Right. And that was only 20 years ago. Right. And we're already redoing it. So that's why I say you've got to get down to that 20 year on a lot of the roads. It's not all because B is an exception, but it, and that's what I'm saying is like I said, I, I have to present that to you. This is where we need to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in 2024, I, we're still only doing 10.26 miles. Mm -hmm. But yeah. B is a huge contributor of where the money's going, and it's not a very lengthy road. <laughs> so, I mean, you're gonna be back on probably 25 and 29 and stuff sooner than 20 years. I'm guessing you're going to have to you know, get back on, on some of those system. yeah state, state system, system, system roads. System. yeah we don't you know control. no i know we don't but somehow it seems to be well, part of it 64 has been a long time i can tell you that yeah <laughs> but that's state and, stuff so we can't keep much and and i guess another thing i just i do want to present to you is obviously we I, I communi communicate with other counties. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I want to compare what our budget is to St. Croix, the Barons, the Pepins, well, yeah, Pepin out of there. But, yeah. Yeah, the Pierce, all that. Polk. What, this $19 million request for next year is actually, I would say, less or very, very comparable to what St. Croix, Eau Claire, Barron, all of them have currently. Um, so like I said, they're they're doing they're doing roads over there that are literally not even 20 years old and mm. and like i said because they don't have the mileage miles that we well have. eau claire is very comparable to us yeah sure. and and they they have right around that 20 um actually they requested a 24 million dollar budget last year and i think they only got 20 21 somewhere around there um overall budget but they have the same amount of roads as we do um, but like we'll fall um, back on is they have a higher tax base and they're gonna say they're equalized value compared to us. Their yeah. population is much but bigger. they have they are actually generating a, a lot of revenue from their vehicle registration. Mm -hmm. It's like three times as much as ours. Oh, yeah, they have more people. They're actually getting less levy. 
but it's basically being backfilled with their vehicle registration. I believe their levy is only 1.5 is what, what they are getting at highway versus us. Yeah. So with their population, that's yes, yeah. the difference. More cars and but like I said, I, I want to present this to you that this is what we need to do, but mm -hmm. we have to start slashing stuff to, to make ends meet. It's going to come in the in the construction side. Unfortunately, we can't do it in maintenance. We have to maintain our roads. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of doing 10.26 miles next year, we'd be looking at maybe just doing county road B. I don't know. Yeah. Not well, doing anything else. So I, that's like the analogy is sort of like an auto repair, you know, like you 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 buy a car or a truck and you take it into the shop and they say, well, you need new brakes and you need new tires and you have a dent in the front you could fix and one of your headlights is out, but you have a thousand dollars. So now you pick what of those five things. Yeah, what, yep. what you're gonna fix and what's what's immediate safety, what's gonna cause your vehicle to continue to run versus just poke. Um you know, that's, I mean, that's, that's the point that we're at kind of countywide, not just us, I think just in general with rising, you know, continual rising costs and, and with the, with labor looking like it looks, um, the workforce looking like it looks, but that's sort of the, I think that's the best analogy that I can come up with the thinking about. So you, so you ask the mechanic for a full quote, and then you pick and choose what you're going to actually do But yeah, even on that, uh, just to kind of highlight the, the construction, um, as you can see, there's in that fifth column, the estimated cost, there's 16, almost 16 and a half million dollars worth of work um, that is estimated next year just to do those. But yeah, we're only two and a half million. And of that, what we're getting funding for almost $9 million of that $16.5 million. So, I mean, it's, we're on the hook for the addition, the, the rest of it. Um, like I said, I, I, I want to continue doing something. Um, we are on Z right now. I want to finish Z. Um, double V, obviously, everybody is aware of what double V we have. That's probably one of our oldest roads too. Um, and it's to the point where we should turn it into gravel, but I'm hearing I've not been up there, but it's not looking good. Um, and then I'm trying I'm trying to implement more of a, a pulverize and repave where we can just go out and grind the road and relay the asphalt. Don't replace any culverts, don't do any of that stuff. Uh, maybe if we do have to replace the culverts, we do that, but no widening, no shoulder work, no ditching, no nothing, where we can get more bang for our buck. No engineering. I'm, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> but that's that's what I'm trying to do, but it's a slow process. Right. And unfortunately, I can't do it in 2024 because of the B project. Um, yeah, we can't save a lot if we do just do B, if we just get rid of the ones that don't have any state funding. That's only a million and a half. I mean, it's not like that's a lot. Yep. Okay. So there's your sticker shock. Told you to be, oh. be prepared. No, yeah, we I kind of just the first time I was expecting that. It was actually more, but uh, we we did get the additional match funding for our B project. Oh. Otherwise, it would have been another. 1.6 million. So you're saying not that. Yeah. 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 Yes. All right. So we don't have to make any discussion on that or roll. So do we have to yeah. have them approve. approve it? Oh, you do approve it. Okay. Motion to move. We approve. Second. Motion been made and seconded to approve. Any hey, discussion? It's always opposite, but yeah, all in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? So does that mean it's finalized now? Yep, it's finalized. Do it. It's finalized. Yeah. Spend money. <laughs> Spend money. Yeah. We'll just bypass the full county board. Yeah, yeah. Nice. We should be good. No problem. There. They gave us authority. 
<laughs> they said, you guys put all that time in with that crew. You just handle it. <laughs> uh, number eight, consideration resolutions, uh, budget adjustment. So very end of your packet, uh, there's some additional uh, state funding that we received. Uh, so we did uh, receive uh, $49.99 just under $5,000 for uh, some traffic control, uh, local force account on Highway 64. Um, the DOT is actually doing some soil borings on Highway 64 for from 0 to 25, I believe it is. Um, so they wanted us to provide the traffic control for the boring. Um, so that's where that, that money was going. Uh, the State Highway 85 seal coat PBM project, uh, we had a contract for $237,000 above and beyond our original budget. Um, and that has been completed and submitted for payment um, yesterday or Monday. Um, then the, the last but not least is the I-94 slope repair, slope repair local forest account. Uh, we have to do a slope repair uh, starting the, the bank or starting slide on I-94. So we're about. Yeah. Um, by exit 32, just uh, between the 32 and St. Croix County. It's uh, 150 feet, 200 feet area, I believe. Is it in that dip? Yeah, yep. just west of. There's, yeah. a, there's some guardrail there, and it's the slopes are straight up and down and starting to crack right where the shoulder point is. So we're going to get some riprap, and that's what we had had for estimated cost on it. So all right. that's so what we presented it. No money in, money out then? Yeah. Yes. Been so it's all That's matching. It. So all matching. whatever expenses we have is paid by the state. So is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. That's second. Motion to make a second to approve the budget adjustments. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh any other incidentals anybody got questions on? If not, next meeting is September 13th, same place, and we are here.